A couple things about the Blackbird desk, 8078. The normal 8078 is a split console. So split console basically means that these channels are inputs, they're inputs only. These faders feed the buses to the multi-track tape machine, which when this was made, of course, was a 24-track tape machine. Then the tape machine would play back in this monitor section over here. Now, a lot of people really loved the monitor section because it didn't have a lot of electronics in it. It sounded great. It's just basically almost like a passive mixer with some amps. You know, this came in around 2001, John bought around 2001. There was a lot of people that wanted more channels on the desk and wanted more power. So a group of people got together and worked out a bunch of mods. And a couple of the mods have stood the test of time on the desk. A couple of them probably haven't, but we won't talk about those. The ones that have were that the desk was modified from a split monitor desk to an inline desk. Now, what that basically means is that now the channel path has a send to tape that is separate from this fader. This fader on this console, unless you push a bunch of buttons, is always the tape return. So the tape return is always on the big fader. The send to tape fader, which used to be here, is now here, which is the old front rear pan. Nobody needs quad, right? That, that idea in 72 was a great idea, but not so much now. So the old front rear pan, uh, panner here is the send to tape. So now the console's in line. So the mic lines come in over there and they come into this module up here, this knob, and it has two modes, mic and line. Now, originally, the mic were for separate things. The line was basically the tape return. If you flipped it in line and you were sending to tape and happened to be sending to the same channel, it would feed back and you'd blow up speakers. Smart powers that be decided that it'd be better to have a fixed tape path. So they made all class A electronics tape path that basically bypasses this line. So now you can be on the microphone or you can be on the line and you can just use an outboard preamp like a V76, there's a bunch of them here, and you can flip it over to line and you just bypass the pre. Again, as this channel is an input channel. In a normal tracking session, you would have it in mic or you'd have it in line, either one, doesn't matter because this fader is always a tape return. And it would come down here and there's a direct button. You hit the direct button and that direct button normally in the console would send channel 20 to bus 20, but it doesn't work like that anymore. Now there's a direct out, it's a fixed direct out that was modified and added to the console. And now the direct button actually does something weird, it takes the tape return and sends it to the bus. So it's kind of like this weird flip thing. So now you can use the buses, the fader here is the send to tape, and here's where you'd select your tape buses up here. To be honest with you, a lot of days here in Nashville, nobody uses those. I'm gonna use them, because I like to mix things together to tape, to tape. But a lot of people don't, they just use the direct out of the console out of each channel, and they. You know, if there's two kick drum mics, there's two channels in Pro Tools. There's two snare mics, there's two channels. And I, I don't ever do that. I don't like to do that. So, so we're going to use the buses. And you know, that's always uh, can sometimes be a glitchy, switchy, puppy, crackly time. But we'll get through it. It'll be fine. Other than that, the console does have a couple really interesting features. One of them is that the entire EQ section can be moved from the channel input path, the send to tape path, to the tape return path, the one button. And it does it silently. It'll take the tape, the EQ, and put it on the mix path. So you have a channel path, like a record path, and a mix path. You can just hit one button. There's also a go global button up there. You hit it and it'll reset, which has happened at the wrong time before. So, you know, always one of those fun things. The console, two custom stereo buses were put in the console. One's the Neve. One of them is a custom a Jensen 990, like an API stereo bus. And those are here. These are selectors to turn the bus on. 
here, and then these are the panners, left and right pan. Other than that, I mean, there's a bunch of other things. There's direct outs of the mic pre. The mic pre has balanced all Neve direct outs on the patch bay. So crazy, you can actually use this console two things in each channel. You could have a microphone go to a V76, put it in line like that, and then you could patch a microphone into channel 20 and use channel 20's mic pre as something else to go somewhere else. Kind of crazy. So there's a lot of features this console has now that it didn't have when it started. And you know, like every time you do a mod, if you mod things, sometimes you lose things. And one of the things that you lose on this is one of the things I really like, and that is the big faders to tape. I really like to use the big faders to mix to the tape instead of just printing a bunch of tracks and mixing it later. I kind of like to not give people a lot of choices. I like to make choices. So you can't really do that can, but it's really, really complicated to make that happen. So, you know, so there's a little idea, a little concept and uh, thoughts behind the Blackbird 8078.